Hey everyone, so today's video is going to be a character guide and showcase on someone that I just got fully booked. Uh, and I'm really enjoying him, and that is Kasim. Now, uh, he's 14 of 15 books, so almost fully booked, but I don't think I'm going to use the other uh, book on him just yet. But anyway, uh, Kasim is one of those niche characters that uh, I think people only fortunate enough to book him should do it. <laughs> but uh, as anyone who has watched my videos, like for RTA or anything like that, knows that I... I really don't have a whole lot of light and dark legendaries, or at least ones that I feel are good in the meta. So I tend to rely on a lot of red, green, and blue characters. Um, so I'm always trying to find ways, uh, you know, and heroes that uh, fulfill a specific niche within my teams. And I felt Kasim was one of those options, uh, considering I had him so close to Ascended 5, which unlocks his trait, which we'll get into here in a second. So, uh, I ended up moving forward and investing in him, and I can honestly say that I think he's a strong unit in RTA for sure. Uh, I don't regret this currently. I might end up regretting it later in the future. He might die off um, or something like that, but right now, uh, I think he's a pretty strong pick. He's not a slam dunk pick all the time. It needs to be someone... Uh, it needs to be a pick where it makes sense for a lot of AoE damage dealers. I think he's a really good counter to Halia. Um, I think he's a pretty good counter to Garnet and people like that. So that is one of the reasons why I built him. So anyway, uh, without further ado, let's just talk about Kasim and what he does, and I'll get into the build. So he has this trait, which is pretty generic, just uh, whenever it's not ascended. It says it reduces damage from area damage, enemy abilities by 30%. So any kind of AoE ability that your opponent is uh, activating, if it's any kind of AoE damage, he just reduces the damage by 30%. There's no cooldown on there or anything like that. He just takes less damage, so that's kind of cool. But whenever he is ascended... He gets dodge up at the start of the round, and it's 100% to dodge. It's not a percentage like Levi or Lydia. It's just always 100%. But whenever he is attacked, it automatically gets removed. So uh, that is a three-turn cooldown. I wish it was a little less, but if it was, it might end up being busted. <laughs> um, because this loops back around uh, more than you think. Um, anyway... Uh, so that is his trait, and that's one of the reasons why he is so good, is being able to dodge the very first attack that he takes uh, guaranteed, right? Uh, so really neat there. His basic ability deals 160% damage. This is whenever it's booked uh, to an enemy with a 50% chance to steal one positive effect while ignoring resistance. So this is pretty cool. Um, I've had some RTA matches that I've uploaded where he steals, you know, max HP buffs. He steals invincible, uh, invincible buffs, uh, you know, immunity buffs. He, he can steal some things there. And the fact that you don't have to worry about his focus is pretty cool. Um, so it's a nice little basic, and this surprisingly hits hard. Uh, I don't know if there's some kind of hidden multiplier or if it plays off of his ultimate. Once we'll get into, it's weird, but this seems to hit harder than it should. So another thing that makes Kasim kind of uh, unique is he has this passive that says removes a control effect upon any area damage enemy ability and counterattacks for 190%. Again, that's because it's booked. 190% uh, damage against whichever enemy has the highest attack. This character is next to act. Cool down two rounds. So, a couple things here. There are uh, one or two other heroes in the game that have passives similar to this. But the thing that kind of makes Kasim unique and makes this passive good is... Like the unlike the other heroes that have passives like this that remove control effects and then go, they actually grant themselves an extra turn. Now that can be really really good in a lot of instances, right? Like just getting two turns um, from a passive is really nice. But as I've mentioned, and I'm sure people have seen uh, in my videos, 
you know, Jabez is a very prominent character in the meta, and he just destroys anybody that grants extra turns. He has started, in my opinion, to fall off a little bit. Uh, he, he's still really good in a really strong pick. The problem is, is there are a couple people like Dark Nick and, uh, and heroes like that in the meta that can make Jabez a bad pick. And on top of that, I've seen more and more top tier, like end game players, have uh, multiple ascensions on light and dark heroes, specifically like Shark Solandre. And if he gets a little bit of boost from those ascensions, Jabez has a really hard time one shotting uh, Shark Solandre. So, going back to Kasim, just off that uh, little tangent there. Um, so. The fact that his passive does not grant him an extra turn, it just makes him cut in front of the line, is really neat because this passive attacks. So it's like he's getting, you know, two turns, essentially, because his passive is dealing high damage, and then he'll get to choose what else to do without granting himself that extra turn to have Jabez kill him, right? <laughs> because Jabez would kill him if he granted an extra turn. So this is pretty neat. The downside, obviously, is you don't get to choose, you know, who you're attacking with this passive. But in, <coughs> you know, like 90% of the cases, I would say that you want to be attacking the their uh, strongest threat with that highest attack. It's not always the case, but, you know, a majority of the time it is. So really cool passive. This is one of the few passives in the game, at least from a red, green, and blue character as well, that gets around Ashlyn and her stun effect. Um, it gets around freezes. So he's just, he's a really good counter pick in the meta for, for reasons like this. <coughs> and then his ultimate ability is pretty cool. Um, so it grants himself dodge up, so he has it on the trait where he, if he's ascended, he gets dodge up, and then if he's attacked, it gets removed, but his ultimate then, you know, puts it back up. <laughs> so pretty neat. It also says removes one positive effect and deals 230% damage to the target, um, and it gets an additional 20% if I use that last mastery book uh, to bump it up to 250. Um, but it says... Uh, this damage scales based on the amount of health lost and ignores element stats of the target. Now this, <clears throat> for the life of me, I have zero idea what this means. At first, I thought it was like he wouldn't weak hit against uh, a, weak, uh, a weak affinity person, but that hasn't been true. I just, I, I don't know what this means. Uh, but anyway, this <coughs> attack does hit hard. And the less health he has, the more uh, this scales. On top of that, um, if he kills somebody with this ultimate, it reduces uh, the cooldown by two turns. So he loops back around to this pretty quickly if he ends up killing somebody. So really cool kit. He's actually one of the few characters as well um, in the meta that I think is able to run a really slow speed to just maximize his attack. So um, that's kind of neat. You know, you don't need speed speed boots. I'm not saying that it's that this is the best way to build him, but it is a successful way so far for me. <coughs> so here are his stats. I I think I uh, <laughs> I'm pretty impressed with these stats to be honest. So he's got 7,000 attack, 370 crit damage. These stats are impressive because, you know, his speed can be low, so I can put him in attack boots. I will say that this precision, you know, being at 100 has hurt me a lot, and I have to find a way to get this up. So I might have to sacrifice some crit damage uh, to get the precision up because I've lost games because of it, and uh, it's been a little bit frustrating. So those are his overall stats. Like I said, he's uh, 14 of 15. I got really lucky with the rolls here. I would really have preferred to just like get the first three rolls here and then everything else in these bottom rows, but it like landed all six in physique whenever I first started, so that was frustrating. Um, 
Like I said, I've got him to Ascended 5, so he's got the attack, speed, health, and defense. These are all actually relevant for Kasim um, because he does take less damage from AoE, and you want him sticking around. So you do need a little bit of you know beef to him so he can be effective. And then obviously his A5 gives him that dodge up uh, ability. So for his gear, I have him in all warrior set. I would most likely, if I get a better assassin set, I would most likely put him in assassin and warrior um, just for the uh, possibility of additional damage from assassin set. But uh, the warrior set is working out for me. Uh, the nice thing with the warrior set is I don't have any kind of RNG. You know, like sometimes I might kill someone, sometimes I might not because of the assassin proc. Uh, so... Yeah, it, it's not bad, but I think if I had a better assassin set, I probably would do that. So uh, the weapon here, I just have attack percentage and crit damage. Ideally, you know, if I had base uh, attack or even HP and defense percentage, it'd probably be a better piece because I don't need the speed. Um, here, pretty nice helmet, crit damage, attack percentage, crit rate. Here I got uh, all the right stats, crit damage, crit rate, attack, health. Here I got attack percentage with health percentage and a triple roll in crit damage, so pretty nice. And then crit damage, crit rate, attack percentage. I'm still waiting for a uh, ore here to increase the attack percentage, but the defense percentage is also nice. And then attack percentage with health, crit rate, and crit damage. Um, these are his glyphs, so he gets speed, some nice health, and then okay crit rate. So I would say his glyphs are actually probably a little lackluster for what uh, you would like to use him for. But yeah, that's that's the build. So um, he's primarily an RTA hero, but I can emulate some of the stuff uh, that I would pick him for in RTA in normal arena. So... Uh, you know, a couple of these teams, like this team here, right? Light Nick will go first, and he'll AoE. So that allows me, um, you know, to bring in somebody like Jonathan to eat uh, the Light Nick attack. I will then bring in Kasim because <laughs> of Kasim's passive. Once Light Nick uses an AoE ability, uh, Kasim will activate his his passive. Whenever he's attacked by an AoE ability, he's he's then next to act. And he'll also counterattack most likely the Yolanda or uh, the Holy Armor Virgil. So we'll go there. Uh, on top of that, you know, let's bring in somebody like... Uh, uh, let's see here. Maybe just Ashlyn and Nero, right? Like just a good balanced squad. <coughs> so here you'll see... You know, Light Nick go, and this is where I would pick Kasim as well. He's a nice counter pick against uh, Light Nick. Here, uh, I will stun maybe just uh, the Evelyn first stun or whatever. But here, Light Nick is going to go. Kasim dodges, and then he uh, attacks the highest attack character on the field, which was the Divine Yolanda. So now, Kasim gets to act even though he was at the very back of the uh, group here, because of his passive, right? His passive uh, removes the control effect. He wasn't stunned or frozen or anything. Uh, he removes that, and then he deals damage anytime an area effect uh, that deals damage is done to Kasim. So now he's next to act, and here, his ultimate ability, you see his dodge is gone, so he didn't take any damage, but his ultimate will put dodge up, and if he kills Divine Yolanda, he's actually going to be able to uh, reduce the cooldown of this from 4 down to 2. So let's see if he doesn't weak hit because of the precision that I was talking about earlier. Okay, so thankfully uh, he did not miss. And as you saw there, he had enough damage to uh, kill the Divine Yolanda. And now his dodge up is back up. So now the opponent has to waste an attack to deal some damage on him. Um, and his passive is now two turns away uh, from looping back around. So anytime they do an AoE ability, 
um, Kasim will then activate his passive again. So pretty cool stuff. <coughs> so we're just going to attack their team here. Switch modes, get uh, Light Nick down to his... Uh, is uh, invincible or unkillable, whatever it is. And then we'll focus on this uh, on this Holy Armor Virgil. So he has, you know, he has this shield here um, with Kasim's basic. Let's see if we can steal it, maybe. So it looks like we did steal it. So that's kind of neat. It could have been uh, the shield from... Uh, Jonathan as well. But here, uh, Light Nick, as you saw, he, he went again. He used his AoE, and then Kasim did the same thing. He activated his passive, and now he's next to act. So then he just goes in and kills uh, Evelyn. So, yeah. Um, this is exactly how I would pick him in, in RTA. You know, if someone brought in a Light Nick or a Halia or something like that, uh, I'd bring in the Kasim to make sure uh, that if they ended up using their ultimate ability, Kasim had the chance to take out their biggest threat. So that's one scenario. You know, another one is like the one here with Garnett, uh, this top team, right? So here, uh, Garnett would go first, try and sleep everybody, and put the no positive effects up. But if Kasim is in the team, uh, he'll actually counterattack and kill the Baron. So then their biggest threat is gone. Now, uh, what we're going to do is we will bring in, you know, somebody like Jocasta um, because the Methasia is going to revive her anyway. <laughs> but if we can uh, kill the Methasia with the Alicia, then uh, I can mimic what would happen in RTA. Okay, so Alicia is going to kill the uh, Methasia here. Um, I think we're just going to do our, our basic. And here, I'll show you, you know, in RTA, if they had a team like this, this is where most likely this Garnet would be going first. And Garnet would go and try and sleep everybody, but Kasim would go. He would remove the sleep if he was slept, and then he would counterattack against the highest attack on the field, which ended up being Baron. And then he would get to go, and then he could ultimate and kill Baron. So then their strongest uh, person is out, but they they revive the Methasia, and then the Baron's going to end up going anyway. Uh, but we have the dodge on Kasim, so he's still at full health, and so on and so forth. So, yeah, Kasim is just like a really nice, strong pick against any kind of AoE team. He does plenty of damage where he's he's a threat himself, it's it's really interesting seeing opponents, um, you know, try and figure out if they want to get rid of Kasim's dodge um, with just a single hit and leave my other damage dealers alive, or if they want to AOE and let him cut in. So it's pretty it's pretty cool to see them uh, think about that. And I've even had some people ban Kasim after playing me for a couple times because he's he just makes it a little difficult to play against. So here, um, another reason why I built Kasim is for the interaction uh, against Shark Soul Andre. Now, I will admit that Kasim usually needs a little bit of help to kill uh, Shark Soul Andre, but he, whenever Shark Soul Andre does his AOE ability, Kasim can cut in, do damage, or he can also steal his max health buff that he puts on himself. So here, um, you know, I think what we're going to do is we're going to bring in, like, Jonathan or something like that. We'll try and uh, showcase the benefits of Kasim versus uh, Shark Soul Andre. So here, uh, you know, we're going to try and kill uh, this Methasia. We're going to stun their Ashlyn. And then here, um, the Light Nick is going to go. He has the highest attack on the field, so Kasim counterattacked there, 
and here we're just going to try and get down um, a little bit of Shark Soul Andre's health. And that was a pretty good attack, actually. Not too bad. Um, he has this character in Divine Set, it seems, which is interesting. Um, but because Kasim already used his passive from Light Nick, I will not put the attack down and defense down on the uh, Shark Soul Andre <coughs> to trigger him. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so here, what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and steal uh, that max health uh, buff from Shark Soul Andre to maybe make him a little weaker. Nice. Okay, so he ended up stealing it there, which is kind of cool. So here, you know, Kasim's passive activating again from... Uh, Light Nick, and then he puts the dodge up on himself again, so we're back in uh, kind of in the same situation, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> um, here, though, uh, we've gotten to the point where Ashlyn has ticked up enough, and she's going to be able to uh, kill the Shark Soul Andre herself. Ooh. Missed, actually, but... Oh, wow, look at this. This is like the story of my life, by the way. Just missing... So his passive activates again. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he just gets more dodge up. Because seems just a really fun fun character. Fun, unique character. Really strong. Um, it's hard to advise people to build characters like this just because of how rare legendary books are. But, you know, RTA is my main focus, so it was not a waste for me. On top of that, um, he is pretty good in... Uh, in Batwolf, to be honest, whenever it loops back around to uh, Chrysis, if it is a water or green Batwolf, I use him in my level 10 team. So it's kind of nice as well. And I think he does have some uses um, in dungeons. Not that he is optimal or anything like that. Um, but with the new dungeon coming out in April as well, or right at the end of April, who knows if he'll be viable there. But I just... I really enjoy heroes like this, you know, people that don't have him built. Like, I think I'm the only person I know of that has him fully booked in the entire game uh, in A5. So it's kind of neat using him against, uh, you know, the rest of the uh, rest of the players and uh, in the meta in RTA. So that's my little guide on uh, Kasim, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.